Yo. Yo, what's up? Which we call our discovery meeting, which is like, let's dig in around what is the idea? How do we refine that? What can we, what are we going to do to get it to be ready to be built? Because we want to build the machine itself in our workspace and test it out. We want to show people how to, how we do what we do. Instead of telling them about it, we're going to be turning on the cameras and showing how we operate, showing the kind of conversations we have. So once these guys get into the flow and, you know, uncross their arms and feel comfortable <laughs> that they're being recorded and put out live on the internet, then we're going to be having a conversation about, hey, what's this machine and what do we want to do here? So any questions? When are you going to stop talking? <laughs> never. <laughs> never. It's never going to happen. <clears throat> okay. So I guess we'll just get into it. Uh, did I miss anything? No, I'm just going to keep rolling. Okay. So what we're going to talk about today is a machine that we've been kind of kicking around. This, as far as napkin sketch goes, is pretty detailed. We've done a bunch of work on it the last year or so. Uh, we've been really excited about it, but we really want to make it real now. So this is a good excuse to work on the development so of this So this is thing. a little further into the NMC process than usual. Cause well, maybe it's, you know, the next NMC, more. you know, or, yeah, it's, it's a very refined yeah, napkin. Yeah. There have been a lot. Of, actually, there's been a whole pile of napkins. <laughs> We've made it into this. Yeah. Uh, shout out to our intern, Ari, who helped put a lot of this material together. He took the pile of napkins that we gave him and made it into a, a legitimately understandable deck, which, you know, is to his great credit <laughs> that he was able to do that. So I'm going to share some things about that right now. And then what we'll talk about is, okay, what do we want? What do we want the boundaries of this project to be? What do we want, like, the next vision of this machine to look like? So... I'll go ahead and get into it. So we've been working on this idea uh, that uses some new technologies from our friends at BNR Industrial Automation. That's why Derek's here today. Uh, you'll notice uh, this thing where there's like a big number two. That's a track system. So a track system is made up of individually controlled shuttles where they can move the products around in all these different configurations. We'll be talking a lot about track technology in the next few weeks and, and what's really interesting and exciting about that. Um, we have this sort of idea of, okay, cool, you want to move the product around with shuttles, how do you get them onto the shuttles? Uh, that's where you see a number one here. We have this idea of how we want to transfer the products from a conventional conveyance system onto these shuttles individually, fly them around, and have them be picked up by a robot that's going to put them into boxes. So um, this is kind of already the, the kind of it looks cool, it looks nice, it's a nice rendering, but it's still a really rough idea, um, and I'll, I'll share a little bit more about it um, and, and why we think this is really cool. So this is the animation of how it works. Uh, Ari did all this in Robot Studio, so all of you out there obsessing about digital twins and 3D animations of virtual machines, like as we do, this is, this is what we built all in Robot Studio, which uh, was really awesome, and a credit to his ability that he came in as an intern and figured this all out. It's amazing. Again, props to Ari. Um, you just see this running laps, and uh, you can see this packing. You know, one of the cool ideas about this is that packing machines like this uh, in the field today, they uh, they tend to have a lot of fixed mechanical tooling. So the products come in. Uh, there's a lot of like machines that kind of stage up the parts to get the robots ready to pick them up. The robot end effector has to change tooling. The machines uh, upstream of this have to change all of their like timing screws and stuff like that. And that can you can lose like half an hour maybe even an hour of production time because you're changing all those mechanical parts. Uh, but products are getting more flexible. We want products to have more flexibility because we have different places they want to go and there's a lot of trends in packaging that, that uh, they're supporting that. So it's a long-winded way of saying this machine can change between different product configurations in seconds uh, without any changes in the hard tooling. It takes up virtually like a third of the space that would typically be used by this type of setup. Um, and so uh, if that's not revolutionary or you're not excited about that, well, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, Where did the first napkin sketch happen? The first napkin sketch happened in the Ondex uh, <laughs> beer hall in, in right. Munich after uh, an exciting global sales conference. Uh, right. And we, uh, we worked on a lot of stuff. So there's been a lot of thought put into this. Uh, I'll tell you about some of the details. So this is the first kind of key piece of this. And uh, yes, the provisionals are filed, so don't even think about it. Um, this is a high-speed shuttle transfer system. So uh, again, the, the drawing's kind of cartoony, so you will have to use your imagination a little bit. You can see uh, kind of like a ribbed or like a corrugated conveyor coming in uh, that's kind of like L-shaped, and there's a certain point where like the floor falls away and the product can drop down uh, onto these uh, shuttles where there's rails that hold them. 
there's reasons for those rails I'll explain in a minute, but it kind of like goes down the slide. Okay, use gravity to our advantage is like a zipper. It can be done continuously. Um, we think this is something that's really cool. Um, even though the shells can be controlled continuous, uh, independently, we can kind of make them behave like a conveyor while we do that transfer, and then we can do whatever we want with them after that. So this is the first kind of breakthrough uh, interesting idea about like how do we get the product onto this so that we can stage it and do interesting things. Uh, this is a simulation that we built a while ago. It's a little, it's a little uh, hard to see, I'll say, but you can see it um, on the top row here, uh, packing up. You'll see it kind of staging different rows of three or two. It's actually doing product transitions in the middle of this video. If you watch really closely, or you go and like slow the tape down, you can see that. And you can see down at the bottom, there's this kind of continuous zipper section where it's matching the incoming flow. And then uh, once the product is transferred on there, it can whip it around to the to the case packing area. So why do we make those rods and have them reclined? It's so that the robot tooling could come in and grab in between those rods, can shift the product up, another row comes in underneath it, and you can see how with very little motion, very uh, efficient kind of uh, takes virtually no time at all. You can see the product moving through this very, very fast. We never want the product to come to a stop if possible. Um, and all of that fixturing is done with a two second tool change. So this shows for different product diameters and different case pack sizes, whether that's three packs, four, or sorry, uh, eight packs, six packs, four packs. It can transition between any of those because there's little servo motors that are on a rack and pinion up on the top. And this is a beautiful video of that. So again, you know, we were using real CAD in here, but this is still a sketch, right? It's still, it's still kind of, we can explain or you can kind of get the idea of it, but it's not ready to be built yet. If I wanted to assemble this today, there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, there's still a lot of development we have to do to get that ready. What are all the parts we need? You know, this is really, it's, it's a pretty sketch, but it's, it's still just a sketch. So. Uh, here's a couple, another way of showing that kind of all at once with the same tooling. We can snap, snap, snap in between those settings. Uh, we can change it over extremely quickly and we are really excited about that. So here's kind of what it looks like when it's grabbing them. You can see these fingers. They're not really detailed in, but you can see, you can imagine them gripping first row, second row, and kind of doing these shift moves to get them in here. Here's our concept for the tooling. So like looking down those rods as if you were looking down the slide on the railing, you can see between green and blue and red, there's different diameters. Uh, there's a bunch of cleverness about how we position these so they can be, they can hold both the tightest pitch and also have the widest, the widest, the red one, or maybe even wider, you know, depending on how fast it's accelerating, things like that. Um, we can hold different product types with the same passive fixture. Uh, this is a, something that we think is really cool about this. And you can see the, the lower darker gray pieces is kind of the uh, the shuttle. That's a shuttle that comes from BNR. That's the track. A shuttle. Got question so, for you. Question. Go ahead. Obviously, because this is a very refined napkin. This is. Don't right? tell me. No, don't no, tell but, me this well, isn't going to work. Don't tell me it's not going to work. I don't want to hear that. This is <laughs> no. Actually, in. actually, the the question was going to be like, I guess you you sort of skipped why. Like, why would you? Why? Why, why would you put this in place versus traditional? Right. It's a great Linked question. conveyor, things like that. I mean, you're. I talked about it. it shows how very quick you can do it, but like, yeah. what do you get? Yeah. So I, I talked about it, and I didn't. I didn't have a slide on it that that compares the before and after. Um, let me put this up, and I'll I'll just let this thing run while we're talking about it. So, the reason that this is interesting is because all besides the change out of the fixed tooling, the tools that hold the fixed tooling take up a lot of space, right? So the first thing is, this kind of a cell takes up maybe a third of the floor space of the same function in a floor. So with floor space being incredibly uh, expensive and complicated to, to deal with, that is a huge benefit just right there. Like it's it's smaller. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, other machine setups that use different kind of change out tooling also have uh, for every product setup, for every case size, for every product size, there's like this multiplying matrix of different types of tooling that you need to have. You need to have tool changers. You need to have all the different kind of fiddly fixtures with the things and you have to maintain all of them. Like a typical cell of how this machine would be done today would have like 10 or 20 times as many tools mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just to hold the product. Uh, You'd have and to do laning. You have to do laning. Yeah, I mean. Tooling per product diameter. Yeah, for different product mm -hmm. diameters, for different case sizes, there's also different screws. And, um, you know, that's that's kind of the established way of doing it. That's the way it's mm -hmm. been done for a long time. And the grouping, um, you, have, you have tooling per grouping, depending on the, 
the way that the cases are arranged? Like yeah. Two by two, yeah. two four by three, packs. two by four. Yeah, right? exactly. So I mean, it also new product development, right? You can yeah. never anticipate right. so what's, you, what's coming right, next. The number of the combinatorics get really ugly really fast. Yeah. Like this can be done with fixed tooling, but as soon as you go a step further, you've you know, doubled everything again, and it's just you've now you've got like, you know, changeover yeah. systems, and it's... Yeah, I mean, the, you're, the you're asking me. I'm gonna turn well, that, I mean, turn you know, I, it was a leading question because I feel like you know. <laughs> well, probably... you, you can ask the leading question. You can answer it too. So, like, what do you think? I mean, we've we've kind of showed you this on the side in the past, and you know, yeah, you not work on this Tell me what level of detail. What's but your I mean, uh, what's your things, interesting uh, things I noticed straight away? The, the rack and pinion being able to do the tool change out. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many places that I've been now that they design a line or they buy a machine for one, two, five products. Yeah. But then, you know, marketing gets a hold of things and all of a sudden now they've got 25 yeah. formats that they have to support. Mm -hmm. And so you see these, you know, really, really intelligent um, operators and maintenance folk that actually go to like as far as like 3D printing parts that then yeah. like clip on to an existing screw that then you turn it until it's just snug enough and then yeah. that's the setting for three formats and I mean they go yeah, through these yeah. really extraordinary you know engineering efforts to try and retrofit whereas if mm. in a system like this now the retrofit sort of built in right yeah it's a yeah. recipe driven which is yeah. obviously the big thing now because there's a really wide range of of product space that you can put into this machine even if you don't know what it is like if it's between those diameters that are going to you know the minimum pitch up to the biggest pitch marketing can come and they can have whatever the heck crazy ideas they want and this machine will be able to accommodate them like even products that haven't been imagined yet and yeah. i know in those companies um there are people in those marketing departments that have these awesome ideas that they want to try they want to try something because there's some live streamer that wants to sell their I mean, like brand of makeup yeah. and they want to have a run of a hundred or a thousand pieces. If their production systems aren't set up to accommodate that, forget it. Like you can only run these huge batches. Yeah. You have to do this like, uh, you know, carpet bombing kind of, kind of, um, marketing and that, that stuff is going away. Stuff is getting, getting smaller and, and smaller. There's so that's zero the motivation for sure. design for manufacture there. It's like, but what if, you know, we slender the bottle just ever so slightly <laughs> and it emotes this emotion and like this is what we want to present. Have you ever, ever seen that? Like, I believe that's You go that's to like real. the shampoo aisle and like weekly, whole formats will fall off. I mean, I was in yeah. a facility, they carried 55 different formats, none of them with a single shared diameter. Like yeah, it was just a yeah. tray, a case just in the corner of just all the different formats, different diameter, different height, different size, different weight. Yeah. And now it's like, we need to manufacture all of them. And those production like people come to work every day and just cry. They, just cry. Yeah, seriously. They, just, they should have, I hope they have private offices because they're in there crying <laughs> <laughs> about how they're going to handle that. And uh, it shouldn't be that way. Like the, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do with equipment to make it that flexible um, and to have it be ready for stuff that, you know, is going to be coming down the pike six months, a year from now. Like it shouldn't be, you know, this like huge ramp up to do this stuff. I mean, um, you, you should know. have to buy whole new lines right. just for a... Tool, right a tooling change right 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 and so that's what we think Th this was uh an interesting one of this is just one example that we picked up we think there's a lot of opportunities like this in track i know you see them um and yeah companies that are thinking this way are, are definitely going to be in position to to do some amazing stuff with their products and be able to respond to trends and market changes that's that's the motivation and that is uh incredibly valuable and you start to be thinking about, you know, billion dollar opportunities, many millions of dollars opportunities and, you know, the, the equipment it's a investment changer, is very, yeah, right? Is, it's is, more than it's anything. Nothing. It's not just changing yeah. how products are made, but it's how you as a company can go to market because now yeah. you're way more agile mm -hmm. at the base of your pyramid, right? Usually it's yeah. like product development trickles down into like mm -hmm. design for manufacturing engineering, then it hits like the operator and, and, and workshop floor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's usually where the, and then it the gets least flexibility back. It is. Gets back and then, and right. Like, and then every nice issue try. starts yeah. to go back up and product development's like, oh, we didn't even think about that. Yeah. And they're like, oh, wait, yeah, we're not allowed. Yeah. It actually needs to be exactly this diameter um, and this color. Um, Okay, cool. How are we on time? We're 20 minutes in. Um, let's do this. I, I just have this background here. This is the end of the presentation, but I think what we should dig into now is like, what do we want to try to accomplish with this new machine concept? Right. And I'll, I'll add, this is one that we want to, this is a machine that we've been kicking around internally and we like want to build. Um, but also look around you. We want to show people what to do with the technology. So the thing that we're kind of tagging into this is also we want to build a demo cell. We want to build a track demo cell 
we want to be doing things and showing people how to use the technology in interesting ways that their business you know could really revolutionize their business instead of just talking about it or putting in PowerPoint decks like we want to do it for real so we want to make a demo cell of this machine in here you'll notice that this robot behind us is the robot that's in this PowerPoint deck we would love to be able to show people like hey come in here and experience this come check it out it's not just some sci-fi idea it's not just some like wacky thing that we dreamed up um, it actually can work it's actually here uh, and it, it could have a it could be a big deal like there's that threshold where if you make it real enough like people start to understand it not just uh, us crazy out there uh, and, and with our weird imaginations so um, that is like the prompt and what I would love to do is just sort of yeah like kick it to the NMC team all right like what what do we want to build so yeah. what are your questions so, and what comes to mind what are you guys seeing yeah um, so you had this thing broken down into three components the robot component the track and the loading mechanism yeah and each of those um, have some areas that are potentially risky or unknown uh -huh. right? and other parts of it you're like yeah this is whatever we know that works mm -hmm. so I'm curious what your assessment is in each of those areas um, the the aspects of it that would benefit from being demonstrated physically yeah mm -hmm. I think we've experimented a bit with the with the um, the tooling the prototype some of the tooling and we just like threw the product on it and like mm -hmm. that works way better than I expected <laughs> Showing that happening in the shuttle, showing that transition from, you know, conventional conveyance like onto shuttle conveyance, like I think is one of the big puzzles of how how to use this technology Why that we should that? definitely show. Well, because um, the product variability that we're talking about taking advantage of, um, you know, if it's just coming off a conveyor, like how do how do you deal with that transition, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Typical conveyors will have like railings that adjust them, you know, that right. are, people are going in and there's literally a crank on it that has a number and then you have right. to go crank it to the right number. Like, yeah. if we can't interface to that world, then this is just a pie in the sky thing, right? So like showing how, okay, there's an incline to it, so we don't need to have like rails on both sides that are adjustable. Like showing people that that's possible, I think would go a long way towards like, right. oh, I know where I can plug this into my existing system. So that, that interface is like physics, hugely important. Right, because things are positively <laughs> captured. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's not like pick up, sliding know, around. Drop, right? Yeah, there's right. gravity, there's mm -hmm. coefficient of friction, there's inertia, there's, you the, know. I mean, even when you're talking mm -hmm. about the physical interactions like humidity on the day, temperature <laughs> on the day. <laughs> right. Right. Hopefully it's well, but the thing is, is that at speed, no, yeah, because yeah. the faster you move, actually, those have a, yeah. a larger effect on what's going on. Right. And obviously, yeah. I, th I think there's also what happens when things don't go right. Like, ha what do you have? Do you have a product yeah. sensor there yeah. that captures yeah. it falling so that you have some way to compensate? Or what happens when <clears throat> one gets a little crooked as you're coming in, right? That means either you stretch automation further upstream yeah. such that you can then say, all right, you know what? These are collated properly mm -hmm. at least this many feet ahead of the drop point. Yeah. Or yeah. you push it just so that you have to be faster and more reactive at, say, the point of transition. Because yeah. when we talk about it, yeah. anytime you lose positive control, that's risk. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can just put a box around and be like, all right, that's yeah. somewhere, like I said, yeah. this is where we need to test. This is where mm -hmm. we need to show it's possible because that's, right. that's one of those key, anytime there's a transition. And it's interesting to think about what would be the, the best way to, you know, to sense that it success yeah you know, even is it, is yeah product system, sensing yeah you know, is mm -hmm. it is it a dumb through beam sensor two through beam sensors is they yeah this thing registered on you know or is it so much smarter the track isn't it it's a servo motor is it right? possible mm -hmm. to measure the acceleration yeah. force of the shuttle to figure out if some things in the in the shuttle passive feed forward so you you make a movement of your own um desire yeah and then you have it track against say your previous awesome. you know <laughs> current <laughs> values right so I mean, there yeah. there are things there that that all of a sudden now you you could do that as a, as a backup, right? Mm. Because the the granularity may not be there. Yeah. But if it's unloaded, loaded, that seems fairly easy. Yeah. But if it's unloaded or it's a an ounce shy, then then maybe probably not. I think yeah. also identifying product centers too, because the whole concept is dependent on like they're gonna go down the slide and they need to be on the center of the slide, otherwise they're gonna be falling off. So how are we gonna how are we gonna perceive somehow or or measure or test like where are the product centers? To be gearing into like that kind of phasing i think is going to be critical too so like how do we deal with sensing um, you also had come up with uh 
a, you know, an optical, optimal angle for that tooling such that, you know, uh, it's gravity is optimal in guess. favor. <laughs> right, right, right. And so, uh, but, you know, the, the, the angle of the tooling is, you know, mm -hmm. in, in one sense, is actually helping retain your product. In the yeah, other sense, right. What's the balance? It's, it's a function of, like, how the product slides down onto mm -hmm. that tooling from the conveyance and, you know, the angle of that conveyance, the material that's used in that conveyance, that that all, you know, those two are kind of linked together because the tooling is fixed. Mm -hmm. It's not dynamically adjustable. So, um, yeah, I think I think demonstrating that yeah, that's all like playing like around in with feed the transition yeah. and behavior and, and, and product and variety and see mm -hmm. if we run into feeling out where the boundaries are. Yeah, cool. I think so too. And it's more of a yeah, it's a mechanical thing. But like, what's the control concept for it? Like. How do how do we what are the different right. options we have what are the backup plans? It can't be open loop where you're just like all right maybe we should tweak it right it has to be closed loop because <laughs> right. you have to be able to find that yeah. boundary. Okay yeah. so let's move on that will mark that as potential candidate and then we'll mm -hmm. prioritize. So uh, the other thing was the track section right mm -hmm. um, anything there that felt risky or necessary to prove out. Well one of the I I think. One of the things that's interesting is sort of like the dynamics of the, of the product handling. Sort of like what's going to happen when you whip that thing around the corner. Can we? What kind of what kind of speeds and accelerations and throughput do we feel like we can handle, like physically, right? Like if you go, you know, never mind the the ratings of the track. Like at a certain inclination, that thing is going to go just like flying off the outside right. of the corner. Yeah. So there's an aspect of like getting the shuttles like with the products and without the products, like, and having that, like completing that circle, completing that cycle, right. like what kind of dynamics are reasonable for us to expect? So we can write know? the physical relationships between, you know, speed and linear acceleration and product geometry and inclinate all that tooling angle, right? Like that's yeah, I a mean, pretty we, simple well, equation. The question is um, the demonstrating it physically that like, Physics matches the, reality. The, the, the goal of the <laughs> machine be should be to demonstrate yeah, that it yeah, works yeah. physically. Um, and yeah. also, um, you ran a simulation, but um, have you have you looked at the output velocities and accelerations from that simulation and made sure that they are below the thresholds that we think are tolerable? Yeah, I think that's something to look into. Um, I don't mind as much like on the overall throughput of the machine. Like for example, like some of these we're showing, it's got like multiple rows and picking up at the same time, like. I think if we're doing a test setup, we could do a little smaller scale. Like we could use like if it can do this, it could also do double that. Like we can have a shorter track, for example. Okay. Um, to as long as we're showing, as long as we have places where we can test the dynamics of no, it can make it around the bend. You know, it doesn't okay. need to have quite as long of a thing. Or you know, these are the kind of uh, decelerations that we can expect and rely on. Okay. That way, that way we know like we can test it physically, but we don't need as much track. Right. I mean, it to, scales to pretty, test it. pretty linearly, right? With, with yeah. linear space, it's your your pick rate. But I, I mean, I saw yeah, that was right, actually going right. to be one of my questions was, you know, you, you post all right, 51 picks per minute or, or bottles per minute. Like, yeah. do you have a range of what you'd like to get to ideally? I mean, are you are you trying to push this so that is this high throughput or is it high mix more than high throughput? I guess like there's also that sort of slider bar that you want to yeah. look at as well because it it could be as simple as you know, a parallel pit lane such that you don't have to wait for the next queue yeah, every time for yeah. it, right? All of a sudden now you have two lanes, robot's able to pick, and then while it's processing those next sets of lanes, right, now it's doing forth. a place, and so yeah, now your, yeah, your yeah. dwell time, your your wait times are, are different. It's like... Yeah, it'd be cool to do a trade-off. I, I think there's two opportunities. One is, like, we definitely have to hit kind of, hmm. like, what people expect in terms of product throughput today, like, which is however many hundred per unit time. Um, and then I think it's really interesting to say, like, with if we, you know, if we add this much track, we can hit, you know, what's, how does it scale? Because mm -hmm. if it's like we could do 10, you know, we can do 10 sure. times the throughput. So sure. I think it'd be interesting to have that chart of, like, what are the balance, like, what's the appropriate balance point, right? Like, um, yeah, this would add, you know, this would make, this would be more expensive, but, you know, it's twice the cost for four times the throughput. Like, that's a good trade off. Like, where's right. that, where's that curve? Like, wherever does it bend? I mean, and, that, that's going to be yeah. good. And frankly, this is a, you know, this is a case study on a certain product, and this is kind of the minimum viable solution for this product, right? Mm. Like this this spe spec, right? Yeah. And the question is, if you're going to build that, do you build it to satisfy just that spec, or you know, an augmented spec? And what would what does that look like? And 
Yeah, so. I think there's there yeah there's there's kind of a target and what's the what's the kind of minimum like what's the most efficient we could hit that throughput target and then there's like where's the where does it start to yeah. tail off yeah. like where where does it start to get too crazy that yeah. like no one <laughs> either no one wants that throughput or yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's just right. you know we, it would be better to build two machines or something, something scaling like on these systems is is definitely interesting because it t it's not purely linear right because yeah, you've right. got a few more interactions you've got a lot of different control pieces that you can yeah. toy with right mm -hmm. because you know you show systems like this it starts out empty then you fill it and then you but really in an ideal world you you might be able to say prime the pump where you actually yeah. hold back the outfeed such that you have a couple sets of infeeds and you can actually change what your steady state is because now yeah. we don't have this queuing process that you see on traditional conveyance mm -hmm. where it's like well the conveyor is going to run for a few minutes while all of the empty ones sort of <laughs> yeah. fill up. Whereas this one now, you almost have, you could do sort of hand to mouth where you just bring them in as fast as possible. But from, say, a throughput standpoint, is that the best or are you accidentally adding cycle to cycle delays, right? Yeah. That you, you may yeah. not need to. And so mm -hmm. now, I mean, that's something that, that we run into a little bit is is the strategy behind fulfilling the, the order, right? So you can just request straight away one in, one out. Mm -hmm. But do you get an advantage of delaying, sort of delaying the gratification of an output by having a little bit of a cue where you know, yeah. all right, this is now my bottleneck and I'm just gonna fill it completely and then I'm gonna maintain this bottleneck, right? Yeah. You can actually design, excuse me, design where your bottleneck is for a process or for a system because now each thing is sort of decoupled and then you've got those timing dials. Yeah, How much faster can we make the, yeah. the robot? Mm -hmm. Do we mm -hmm. wanna add more picks or do we wanna do faster picks with less yeah, yeah and so now there's there's your one dial for that for the track again it's like how many shuttles do we want queued up how many do we want you know in place you showed pretty standard where everybody sort of shows up and then spreads out but yeah. that means the, the the last product is actually the first one in place and then you've got that accordion effect mm -hmm. out right mm -hmm. but is that the best or do you want to get you know slow the last one down so that they're all arriving at the same time. I mean, there's there's things yeah, like that where, yeah, like, all of a sudden now you're sort of shaving off a little bit, but over mm -hmm. 10,000 cycles, that's actually quite a bit of time. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. decoupling the problems uh, is interesting. And I think that, yeah, that's, like, layout, kind of layout and process modeling for this, for this as the, like, here's here's the machine we're trying to build. I logistics think, control, right? That's, yeah, that's going like to be a layer flow, in and of itself like flow, is the logistics, yeah. mm -hmm. not yeah. just how the track moves. It's what algorithm sits on top to determine how we want that, right? right. Because once Traffic you get converters, once you get yeah. a larger yeah. system, now all of a sudden <clears throat> that becomes critical is like make a decision. All right, in feed one to out point, you know, outbound point five, three, one, two, whatever, right? That becomes part of how you increase or artificially decrease your your throughput right yeah. that that's a huge huge thing now that you have to consider i wanted to take to like um the the other requirement that i think is in, that we, is really important in my opinion for us to show physically is like the divert process right like so i'd almost say like it's a must have even though this machine didn't show one if we're going to be building a, a setup here we need to have we need to show physical divert happening um we need to we need to have some kind of recirculation loop or like an off ramp I mean, it'd be great if you if it could fully recirculate, so it could just be like at full speed, um, just because I think that's something that's really special about this technology um, versus a lot of stuff that's out there and opens up a lot of possibilities. Like we need to show, uh, in my opinion, divert because um, so just going in a circle. You, uh, you know that cell is pretty busy because the loading mechanism is. This cocktail napkin sketch yeah. is busy. Yeah, yeah. We should work on so, this for a few weeks. Okay, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> the it the uh, as as drawn, there's no it doesn't appear there's space for a divert. Meaning you'd you'd have you'd have a a conflict with the load conveyance. I'm writing down must divert. Yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then there's an interesting thing about scale prototype because you know building this kind of speculatively like obviously we're really excited about it we want to invest in this but you know we don't you know track is has a cost per meter it's expensive yeah. it's got a lot of permanent magnets and fancy electronics inside it Servo so we want to do what we can with the you know, minimal uh, setup. stainless steel box so, stainless yeah. steel you know it's really really be i cannot wait to unbox it it's gonna be so pretty <laughs> <laughs> wear uh, steel toe shoes Steel toe shoes. Okay. Safety hazard. PPE. 
Okay. I'm telling you. Because it's full of magnets. Because of the magnets. <laughs> it's because they're heavy. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the magnets, they, they're, they're heavy, like, like 3,000 pounds. Okay. Like, but you got steel toes, dude. Stick to it. I mean, if you get a pallet of it, you might, you might push the weight. Oh, we'll get a pallet of it, I hope. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it's gotta it's gotta be like accessible and something that we would want to we would want to scale. It has to be affordable as a test setup, um, you know, because again, we, we want to inspire people. We think this is a huge opportunity, um, but you know, it's it's cash and investment. So that's something we want to try to optimize against as well. If we can show things on a small scale track that we, for sure, will scale up by showing yeah. the, the dynamics performance, like that would be that would be a huge win. What is your um, okay and so back to the robot and the end effector that's the mm. third section we didn't really talk about. It looks like you, you put some effort into the um, into the uh, dynamic um, pick head uh, layout with the individual gear motors but the end effectors themselves are kind of a cartoon still. Is that something um, you know what's your assessment of risk there in the overall scheme of things? I think I think it would be hard until we have the the product idea. I mean, this is a cylinder. It's a straight cylinder. Um, it's kind of based off of some other things that weren't quite straight. I don't know that we would yeah, be able to design a fixture. At the AutoZone, please. Well, there's two things we could do here. One would be like, do we take this kind of row concept and just put like suction cups and be like, there's a flat suctionable surface on it, mm -hmm. and we just make a fake product that's like that? Like a lot of products look like that. Yeah. That would be one way to do it. Um, and there are a lot of intricacies, obviously, when you are picking a product. I mean, despite what we're saying about taking any type of product, like you need to be able to get it somehow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if we want to just take this kind of cartoon cylinder bubble, or we just sort of divert, we just sort of punt that and say, this is basically the row concept. Because one of the things also about this fixturing is that it takes, it's good at taking two rows um, because it does this shift move. It could, pro it could do a third, but anyway, I. We haven't thought through all of that, and so I'm wondering if, like, maybe that's something that we wait until we have the thing that we, you know, the actual product that we want to build, and be like, let's take on the fixturing concept because we're actually grabbing, it. like, we're actually physically okay. needing to lift it and swing it around. And so, or we do something simple, or we just pick a simple one. For now, the head. So basically, we're saying, hey, the head uh, portion is just build a much, much simplified version of this. End effector. I, yeah, I don't even know that we need to build this. I mean, we could just leave it virtual. Okay. Um, I mean, and just run it in the, you know, run the simulation, put all servo motors yeah. in the concept, like, you know, a bunch of servos on the end effector tooling with these kind of concepts. There's just so much, there's so much uh, solution space there that yeah. I think is like dependent on stuff we don't know yet. So, so I, right, it sounds like what we're talking about prototyping first is the loading mechanism with the conveyance. We manually load the line and demonstrate that a track can pick up the product off of a moving conveyor. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, I mean, and, and obviously, like building end effector tooling is something that we can play around with, and or we yeah. can, you know, if we have some sample products, or there's somebody watching this who wants to bring us a product that we can play <laughs> with, um, then uh, we would be happy to do that and, and maybe make the concept around that. But I, I feel like the track dynamics, like showing what was possible with track, um, this is cool. But I think like there's a lot of uh, end effector designers and people out there that'd be like, oh, I didn't know there were little these little tiny servo model using. Like, it's not. I think like it's within people's understanding better than like a lot of the track and the transition. You know what we're talking about with the product transition. So th that's an opinion. Yeah. I mean, okay. Um, I think that would be cooler to show. Um, I'm happy to cool. have people disagree, but. So without the um, without the end effector in, in this demo cell, you don't need the case erector or the the case conveyance. Um, right. That would be helpful. We can show the picks. We can show the robot motion. We could simulate these motors, and you know, we could put in time, you know, expected timing delays for different kind of interfector behaviors, so that it would be, you know, it would be accurate, physically accurate, or timing accurate, um, you know. But maybe we just have something that kicks the product off it when it when it comes around. I think that Speed might be the a, shuttle up and throw it. That's a good idea. Yeah. We could do the it. ballistics model, watch it fall <laughs> and hit it box every time. We'll put it on the outside outside bend of the curve. We'll, we'll hit there just the Excel that would perfectly drop it into That's the garbage, it. Or, <laughs> or have a robot catch it and put it. We'll we'll have the kind of like we'll yeah. take it off some sweet jumps, have it go right back into the recirculation. Are that you might be harder. So a conventional, um, you know, production line with of cylindrical objects. You know, there's, uh, you know, it comes off the end of the line in a on a conveyance system, usually guided. Uh, so from there, it needs to get uh, rotated over and inclined. So 
it has, you know, the product is being fed on a horizontal conveyor, and at some point it needs to make this transition to, to the inclined conveyor. And so that transition, the, the, the inclined conveyor is powered, the horizontal conveyor is powered. Um, the transition between those two may not, me, may, may not be powered. You're talking upstream of this. Yeah, the, what's feeding this, right? There's a bunch of twisty conveyor things out in the world that There's I feel a like... A minimum rotation length, right, that it gradually changes, but that's that's actually pretty normal. We've right. seen things stand mm -hmm. up yeah, like that. Okay. I've seen and cans so, do corkscrews and stuff. Yeah, like okay. it's, so that, we, I'm just we taking for granted that that exists. We need to be concerned exists. that... But would the prototyping process... So we're not worried about loading this conveyor. We'll lo manually, we're talking about manually loading the inclined conveyor and not worrying about getting stuff onto the inclined conveyor. Right. We'll okay. we'll we'll take we'll start it inclined maybe with a straight yeah. section or something. If we okay. Can. Cool. And um, how to ramp it up and how big it needs to be to test and these are all things to kind of head, head scratch about. And the material and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. yeah, this is shown as flat but um, kind of rib. It also yeah. shows this like super acceleration at the end. But again, this is yeah. this is just some <laughs> Fusion 360 demo. So. Right. Um, You've got all this woodworking stuff. You could probably just put a you know high poly coating on a piece of wood and push it along. Right <laughs> yeah. We'll cut some grooves in yeah. with, the, with the V cutter um, and make so, some tank treads. Go ahead, any other, go ahead, Nathan. So is there any concern about um, timing the row of, of cylindrical objects and the, uh, and the shuttles? Like, yeah, how definitely. Is, yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, I, and I, that's probably I was, the biggest risk. That's one of the things that I wrote down was sort of um, product in feed, product sensing. Like, how do we see where the centers are? Is there a vision product that might be useful for that? That would be a good thing to look into as part of this concept, Nathan. Yeah. I think laser displacement sensor also sounds kind of interesting, or maybe both. And yeah. probably that needs to be a servo so we know exactly where it is, or at least have an encoder on it so we can reference. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, what's the concept for how we're going to pick that pick that up? That should be, that's definitely the, the sync pulse. That, that That's the the pitch that we need to hit. So we definitely we need to have that phase right. Um, we need a minimum strip. I mean, this loading process happens over some Wouldn't dis be linear distance. We assume it's happening <clears throat> over a straight segment because we don't want to try to curve these things around. Um, right. So right. there is a straight segment of the track at a minimum that we need. Uh, in order for this probably, process to happen. Probably. Or, or it ha you use the curvature of the track. I mean, I'm thinking, why come off a straight onto this when um, a rotary indexing dial would, would eliminate spacing issues? It would have knowledge. You have a very known yeah. pocket. Mm -hmm. You'd have a encoder signal. Yeah, we should dig in. We should it's whiteboard that. Idea. Like, I mean, the, the those transfers are pretty robust. And because this is product transition, I mean, most round things tend to be put on them for various processes anyway. And, and okay. we know that, I mean, from, from my experience seeing, seeing this, um, you could do, uh, you know, tubular objects pretty easily on a rotary uh, dial and then have that dial key in onto a curved portion of the track during the fixed arc area. And all of a sudden now it's tangential and by the shuttle moving past, you're essentially handing it off yeah. right it can be yeah. it can be something with a little bit cleaner handoff which you're dealing a lot Whenever less a with like a pitch it like a pitch wrong. adjustment we do have a whiteboard <laughs> yeah, um a pitch although we're, we're gonna run low, we're gonna run out of time here shortly yeah. we're gonna wrap up soon i think that might be a good thing to discuss on thursday like i think we should talk about hey what's the track layout what are the different possibilities um we got a bunch of toys we could play with and we can whiteboard it and just kind of like let's try to get the the overall layout of like the concept and then our if, if it's different the the prototype machine that we want to build like that can be the yeah. activity for thursday and yeah the other piece i'd like to at least explore is is why have the track perfectly horizontal yeah yeah and we we can get into that too right i mm -hmm. mean there's some advantages where you change the incline and now that curve becomes a lift into place mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it it's change in elevation sides, yeah, can yeah. mate you know do the marriage at a cleaner transition point now so yeah. you're in your you know Transfer plane. Yeah. There's some yeah. other things that you can definitely play with where from a spatial constraint, now all of a sudden you tip things and now your volume changes ever so slightly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, right. 
Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll get the we'll 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 plan that discussion for Thursday, and then right. you know as the weeks once we get more like once we have here's the mechanical concept, here's the like physical architecture, um, we can take the next couple weeks and be detailing out like what kind of power supplies, like what kind of like what are the control systems, like what are the control architectures, what are the bills of materials, like these are the things we can work on like once we're set on fixture concept, physical layout. Um, That'll give us plenty to do for simulation for tools. Yeah, sim yeah, simulation. Yeah, right. Like, I could see weeks weeks three and four being like a lot about simulation tools, mechanical, electrical, analysis. thermal, yeah, logistics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gives us plenty to work on. So My, we, I wonder if we should throw anything out of the scope. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, this is going to take a few a few steps. I think exploring yeah. that secondary concept with the rotary indexer loading would, uh, you know, is an important one because it would potentially fundamentally change the track design. Yeah. Yeah. We need yeah. to. I think that's the the kind of every a lot of decisions flow from that. So. Yeah. So I think that that's really we we'd have to go down every every possible branch to really and there's no point in doing that in, unless we. Yeah. Let's get settled there. Yeah. The nice thing is there, is so. that uh, you can you don't you're not fixed right. I mean once you get a, a track layout, I mean mm -hmm. you just push your software to be rotary reception on a, yeah, a corner yeah. right mm -hmm. or at a curve linear reception you know mm -hmm. 200 keep millimeters that, keep in mind the rotary the, like part of the thing about rotary indexes is usually they have tooling right usually they, not if they're made of shuttles right yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's what uh, he was saying yeah, yeah okay uh, like actually a circular track. I'm so you glad you're here. Could do well. No, I mean both. All right. Yeah, In the right. end, literally a we, bunch of 45 segments. Just a it, it, it could be. I mean, we've we've seen that, but that would be that would be huge. You probably could get away with, um, I mean, two 180s next to each other. There is some talk of a 360 degree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, well, I mean, are there any like boundaries or other things? I mean, I, I think like, do we all agree that you know? And effective tooling, like we care about, we think is interesting, but we want to focus on the track architecture and showing track, and it's yep. enough to kind of let that lead that virtual for now. Yep. And then, yeah, we'll have to, you know, we're not. There are things that we're not going to be talking about on live streams, like that are secret. So I'll just say that right now, we're not going to be discussing dollar numbers, although you might see us wincing or like getting really excited at different moments because we're like, yes, I figured it out. Like I just saved us a ton of money on how to do this. We're engineers. That for sure happens. That is a huge motivation. But um, certain other specifications and other stuff that are, see, you know, it's a. We're really excited to be sharing hourly. There's some. There are some boundaries of what what we share. Talk to us and let's get under NDA and we can share all that stuff with you. Um, but um, I think that that'll be our exercise at the end of this. We'd love to have a meeting where we're saying, okay, here's the design. Here's what we're going to build, and then stay tuned for season two because then we will be actually building it. Our devs will be working on it. We'll be prototyping it. We'll be mechanically assembling it. We'll be commissioning it. We'll be doing all those things. And you can tune in and see all of our uh, successes and surely failures and mistakes and learning along the way. So I hope you're all excited to join us for that. And yeah, any other final words before we, before we peace out? No, this is More cool. This is cool. Thanks, everybody. More Good job, guys. Right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you next time. Sweet. Roll the tune. Roll the Wu-Tang.